Hello and a very warm welcome to this video. This video is all about construction industry scheme or what you guys probably know it as, as CIS. What we're going to be talking about is how this very software we're about to look at, QuickBooks Sole Trader, is by far the best solution on the market for making sure that you stay compliant with CIS and also we're going to be making sure to show you exactly how easy it is to deal with CIS within QuickBooks Sole Trader. This one's not to be missed so let's go straight into it. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer of Fancy New Logo, that QuickBooks chap on his net, head of accounts here at Boffix, and also your friendly podcaster who goes live each and every Monday morning for As the Accountant. Not only that, I'm also your Digital Disruptor Award winner for 2024, and also your Hero Behind the Hero Award winner as well. So today's video is going to be really interesting. We're going to be looking at the CIS options within QuickBooks Old Trader. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what QuickBooks Old Trader is, it's basically the most simplistic version of QuickBooks there's ever been. I've done a couple of videos, but let's quickly go into what's so good about it. First of all, it's mobile first, which means there's a mobile app, as you can imagine, and on the app you can record mileage. Great for when you want to record your mileage from going to site to site. You can get your bank account, so it does auto categorization, which I promise you will be an absolute lifesaver, including the opportunity to really make it quick and easy to do these bookkeeping. It's got cash flow management, so you can plan ahead to make sure that you've got everything you need. It gives you the details of what you need for that final tax return as well, then the year. But what I think is the most important bit about this for you guys is the fact that there is CIS inbuilt directly in the product. So let's go straight into the product itself, figure out exactly how CIS works. As you can see here, I'm literally starting up this client for the very, very first time. Okay, so everything's now all set up. First thing we want to do is tell QuickBooks Old Trader that we are a CIS contractor. To, to do that, we're going to need to go to the settings area and actually turn CIS on. Let's have a look. So first of all, I'm going to go to the top right-hand corner. From there, I'm going to go to the company cog button and I'm going to go over to profile and accounts and settings. From here, it's always a good job to make sure everything's set up correctly. Maybe put your logo in, your company name in, make sure you've got your address and stuff so that when you do send your invoices out, they're going to be correct. I need to do though is go to advance and I need to come to the construction industry scheme CIS option and I need to go to the on off button and make sure that I've turned that on. From here we need to put our UTR number in and if we have it available our employers PRI scheme and accounts office reference number but in most circumstances you won't need that that's only if you're actually employing other people to work on behalf. For most of you though all you're going to need to do is put that UTR number in. Once I've done that, I can press save. Now that I've got the UTR number in, I'm going to use this I am a CIS subcontractor button just here. And from here, I can choose which rate of CIS I'm going to be deducted from me. Now, the rate is always dependent on HMRC. For the majority of you out there, you're going to be 20%. There's also a few of that you can be on 0% as well. For me though, I'm going to go with the standard, which is 20%. From there, I'm going to do the save button. And from the save button, what that basically means is I'm now enabled CIS going forward. Now, there's a key part to CIS that we need to make sure. And that's by making sure our customers are set of CIS as well. So if I go to my customers area and I add a customer manually, I'm going to call my customer Bob. For most of the times, you're going to want to put email, mobile, phone numbers, and all that sort of stuff in, and address as well. Key information, though, is at the very bottom, there's this option for Is CIS Contractor. Now, if I don't include this CIS Contractor button, I won't be able to make sure CIS is put onto my invoice. So, I'm going to make sure I turn that feature on. Press save. So, now that I've created a customer, that's the CIS contractor, and I've turned on those CIS features, I have everything in place for me to start interacting with CIS when I start sending my invoices out. To do that's really straightforward. Again, we need to go to a customer that you've turned CIS onto first. In my case, Bob. From here, I can either create an invoice directly from the right-hand side, or don't forget you've got your new button at the top to create an invoice there as well. From here, I can see exactly what my invoice looks like 
and I can start interacting with my products and services. Now, because we've turned CIS on, we have multiple CIS options here. We've got CIS labor at 20%, which again is for the majority of you. And then we've got the 0 and 30% option available to us as well. We even have an option for CIS materials, but we'll cover that in a moment. Let's go for CIS labor 20%. I'm then gonna do a description, so maybe day rate. I'm gonna say how many days I worked in that month, whatever my rate was. Now, this is where Quibbles is gonna be really clever. Because without me having to do anything, it's automatically at the bottom here, done a subtotal for me, which is the 25 times 100, but then it's less the CIS for me automatically. Meaning that the invoice I'm gonna be sending out is gonna be for 2,000 pounds. If I save that, I look at my review and send, you'll notice that I've got 2,000 pounds that I'm asking to pay, even though my rate is 2,500. Automatically deducted to that 500 pound, getting it correct. Now, what if I had materials to deal with as well? Well, for let's go and create a new invoice. This time I'm gonna use that left-hand side. First thing I need to do is select my customer. Remember, it has to be a CIS contractor customer. And then I have my CIS labor 20% there. Let's say I had the same 2,500 rate. But I also had some materials that I've had to pay for on my behalf. Let's say for 500 pound. Well, in this instance, QuickBooks has calculated the 3,000 pound as my subtotal, which is correct, but only deducted 500 pound of the CIS because it's only taken into account the CIS labor at 20%, meaning my materials, which I'm basically reimbursing myself for, aren't including that CIS calculation. Again, I can review and send, and I'm good to go. Now, technically, we don't see the CIS being reflected on it until we've been paid. And at this point, we've only sent the invoice. And if you do have your bank account connected, you'll be able to match it directly to the transaction as it comes into the bank. So when that 2,000 pound, that 2,500 hits the bank, I'd be able to deal with it now. So to record the income, I have two ways of doing it. Now, you'll notice on the bank, I already have money from Bob arrived in on the same date. So for me to record this as being paid, I jump into my get paid option, jump into the invoice, find the 2,500 and record as payment. That way I can then choose it to a business current account. It's gonna look through the transactions and it's gonna find that 2,500 that I've just seen. I press next, I say the amount to apply is 2,500, I press save, and that transaction's now been included in there. If I wanna record it as cash though, similar process, I press the record payment, drop this down, put it to the cash account, and then choose the date and the amount and press save. In both instances, I've now stated that my invoice has been paid. So now I'm not shown as my invoice being shown as due. And that means then that I can account for that CIS as well. To account for the CIS, I go into the CIS section. Under taxes, I go to CIS. This will also tell you about that bit about, first of all, turning on CIS and then creating a contractor. I'm gonna view my CIS reports as needed. And now from the report section, I can jump into manage construction industry scheme and the CIS summary report is a report that's gonna tell me, it's gonna tell me what CIS I have suffered so far, which is a brilliant report to use at the end of your year, because now I can go to my income tax section. That's gonna tell me what my income tax is looking like and what box numbers to include them in. And now I also can use that other report to say how much CIS tax I've already paid over, already suffered, and that's gonna be able to, for me to complete my tax return. If you're still unsure, make sure you head over to one of my other videos to look at sole trade in a little bit more detail. Because I promise you with the auto categorization of the bank and how easy you've just seen being able to create those invoices, it's really, really straightforward as a CIS contractor to be able to keep on top of it. You can have estimates of what your tax position is gonna be, and ultimately it's gonna be the best way for you to be able to keep on top of your tax return for a tax year as a CIS contractor. But let me in the comments below, what do you wanna see added to make this even better? What would make it your life easier as a CIS contractor to be able to make from this? Personally, I'd love to see some extra updates come to the app itself. I think that will really make it more dynamic. And there we have it, a first update at the CIS section for QuickBooks Sole Trader. Now, 
If you want to be the first to know about all of the updates that come into the world of QuickBooks Hold Trader, then you're already in the right place. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff to make sure that you are always up to date with how things are going. My name's been Adam Patrick. As always, this video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Hello and welcome to this new series. Hello and welcome to this video. 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 Alright, let's get it set. Let's do this. Oh no, you're alright. Yes, I'm aware we go live every Monday. The next generation is that everyone else that missed it. Yeah. So, come on. All right, you've told us what you love about the industry, but what would you change about the industry? Where do I start? Just during that period of time, where did everyone turn to? Their account, right? Their advisor that would give a new, all the phenomenal work for small business.